Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Nari Hishmati. I'm a board certified OBGYN. I live out in the Pacific Northwest, so I'm shooting this video and the future videos you're going to see with some scenery we have. In the background, we're at Makultio. Uh It's a nice, kind of quaint city. There's a ferry in the background there. And we've got some great weather today. Today's video and this first one that I'm shooting is going to talk about due dates. So this is something that often comes up at our first visits with patients, and it can sometimes be a source of confusion. So a pregnancy is dated by the first day of the last menstrual period. The reason for that is it's really consistent. So if you think about it, most everybody will know the first day of their last period, and we simply add 40 weeks to that, and that's your due date. We also call due dates the EDD, or estimated date of delivery, or estimated date of confinement. Now, over the years, there were always little tricks for how you could do that. So you could take the first day of the last period and add 280 days, and you're set at your due date. There was a rule that we used to often talk about, Nagel's rule. An obstetrician in the 1700s, 1800s in Germany came up with this. And the idea with this was is you could basically just take your first day of your last period, go back three months, and add seven days. So it was an easy trick for calculating a due date. Uh, so, for instance, let's say your due date, let's say the first day of your last period was March 7th. If we went back three months, we're in December. So December 7th, now we add seven days. So December 14th, that would be your due date. Now, that's assuming a lot of things. So the reason that we look at the first day of the last menstrual period was because that's something that everybody has consistently. But we assume that everybody has a 28-day cycle. We assume that everybody ovulates on day 14 we assume that you conceive within about 24 hours of that date of ovulation. And we assume that everybody remembers the first day of their last menstrual period. So that's a lot of assumptions, and it's really important to get a good due date. So if you think about it, if somebody goes past their due date, we might start to think about things like an induction. Uh, for our higher risk patients, people with diabetes, people with high blood pressure, we might recommend some extra monitoring. How we know when to do that monitoring, or how do we know if a baby's growing well or not, is really gonna be dictated by having a good solid due date. So over the years, as ultrasound became more and more accurate and more and more widely available, we started looking at due dates and saying, well, how do we compare it to the ultrasound and should we change someone's due date? And this is where a, a big source of confusion sometimes comes up when patients come to their first visit is, when are we gonna keep a due date and when are we gonna change it? So, you know, the accuracy of the ultrasound is the most accurate the earlier it's done. And ACOG, the American College of OBGYNs, has some really good guidelines that they put out there for when you should keep a due date and when you should not based on an ultrasound. So, one of the most accurate ultrasound measurements we're going to get is a crown rough blink. So imagine when you see the little picture of the baby, we've got the crown of the head and the rough, or the bottom, and you take one measurement from there. You can get a pretty good measurement at around six weeks. Now, at that point, between six and just shy of nine weeks, eight weeks and six days, that ultrasound should be within about five days of the due date we have on your period. That's going to tell us we've got a good, solid due date. That's our margin of error. If it's any more different or descriptive, we should really think about changing the duty. Now, the further out we get, these ultrasounds become a little less accurate because babies grow at different sizes and various things. So between nine weeks and 13 weeks and six days, we're going to give it about seven days. Now, that's why those first trimester ultrasounds can be important to confirm and do that duty. Now, everyone typically is going to get that anatomy scan. Uh, it's often thought of as the gender scan because that's when we can tell you what the gender is. That's about 18 to 20 weeks is traditionally when that's been done. Now at that point, an ultrasound can be off by 10 plus days. And let's say somebody had no prenatal care or late prenatal care and they came in the third trimester, that could be off by up to three weeks. So that's why it's really important to get in early, get an early ultrasound and get a good due date set. Now, the other thing that will often come up is, in the past, you'd always see us walk around with these fancy little wheels in our pockets. And you know, you could flip through them and take a look and go, hey, wait a minute, there's the date of the first last menstrual period, so your due date is this. The, the problem with these wheels, and a lot of the issue that would come up with them is, you know, depending on which wheel you used, you'd be up or down a day or two here or there. It wouldn't make a huge difference, but it could always be frustrating. So somebody would come in and say, well, my due date is March 4th, and today I'm 21 weeks. And you'd wheel it out, and well, no, you're 21 weeks in three days. And so it's nice to have something consistent and set. So most of the time now, what you're going to see us do is we've got either programs in our computers, we've got apps on our phones, we have... There's the ferry that I was talking about. So we've got these really consistent ways of making sure we're getting the same number every single time. So it's rare for us to necessarily use a wheel at this point. We're going to put it in the computer, we're going to get the same one every single time. 
Uh, for the OBGYNs out there, ACOG does have a really nice app that you can put in all the information. It's going to give you the due date, you can tell and put in the ultrasound information, and it's going to tell you whether it should be changed or other things like that. So I hope that was helpful, and that's the information on due dates. Thanks a lot.